ya ali madad alwais rai abu ali missionary wise number 607 20th of april year 2002 my lecture to the students in sana monica jamatsona of ali ya ali madad i've already started a little talk i'm talking about ishnaqis and ismailis from muslim point of view so i was explaining to you our position in islam as i told you we believe in one god there is no partner to god god is unique no one like him god had no body he has no physique nothing is like him and he is transcendent he is above everything we cannot comprehend him fully so we believe in one god but there is a little subtlety between the understanding of muslims generally and we ismailis and what is that i asked uh, many time i asked these uh, sunnis when they say about allah 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 what is allah oh he is merciful i say merciful is the attribute not his person his person or personality or personage it's something different so we say muslims cannot understand this thing but we know god is noor noor means light but when we say light it doesn't mean this kind of light word noor cannot be translated into english except light with capital l it is not sufficient noor means which has all the qualities that god's attributes we are being told there is kindness in noor there is mercy in noor there is maintenance in noor there is destroy in noor everything so allah is noor and that noor has no form now the difference between noor and us is so great that we cannot understand noor now if god wants us to understand he can but normally human being is very weak human being cannot comprehend god so he appointed a person known as a nabi or a prophet so he sent 124000 prophets 124000 prophets from adam up to prophet muhammad the time is so great that we cannot definitely can say so many years because 124000 prophets in every nation in every country in every civilization there were prophets no country no nation has been spared so we ismailis also believe the other people they don't believe other muslims and that belief is the guidance of god is continuous perpetual not that 1400 years ago prophet muhammad died and the guidance of god also also ceased human intelligence doesn't accept it if god has created so he maintains it guidance did not stop after the death of prophet muhammad the communication between a prophet and god stopped because he was the last prophet but the guidance to mankind did not stop 
इट इज कंटिन्यूस परपेचुअल एंड इट विल लास्ट फॉर एवर सो लॉन्ग ह्यूमन बींग इज लिविंग ऑन दिस अर्थ हाउ प्रॉफिट हुड एंड इट बट देन इट वॉज इमा हु गेव द गाइडेंस एंड लीडरशिप टू मैन काइंड let me tell you another thing there are two words you must remember tanzil and tawil tanzil means revelation tawil means interpretation tanzil the that means revelation stopped now remains the guidance from that revelation which is known as interpretation sometime muslim friends meet me normally they don't talk much with me but uh, uh sometime i ask in quran allah says there is knowledge in quran of everything past present future there is a knowledge information in the quran so i asked one person how about artificial respiratory system if a person becomes very terribly terminally ill then they put him on the machine which gives the breathing artificially so he was mum couldn't speak couldn't answer now it must be in the quran we can't get it how about transplantation there is nothing in quran the mullah cannot say this is the ayat but it is the imam the speaking quran imam is the speaking quran mullah murtaza ali had that claim you know anything about jang asifin there was a a big battle between ali and muawiyah muawiyah had nearly seven times more people in his army than mola murtaza ali had at that time but because of mola murtaza ali himself he was a very good fighter and his own other ashab like uh, malik ushtar very brave man and other people <coughs> mawiyas people his armies they were just retreating and they were at the verge of losing the battle so umru as an accomplice of mawiya he ordered just a tie a book of quran on their spear head and just raise it when they raised it mola's army stopped at that time mola said am the speaking quran just destroy this quran but uh, mola's own army they did not follow that so ali said i'm speaking quran because he knows the interpretation of quran and that is why we smileys we believe that imam has the prerogative of giving the interpretation of quran applicable to the present time it is imam who can tell us now in this 2002 year if you have any technological or any scientific or any other problem imam can guide you so we must follow imam that is the guidance of noor of allah this is our faith yeah will you please stand Very nice. Yeah. Okay.
says in the Quran you have to pray five times a day and we smileys pray two times a day. Is that because three, three, three times <laughs> three times a day? Um. My son, there is no mention of five prayers in Quran. It is the misinterpretation of Quranic guidance that these mullahs and sunnis have. Our Imam is the direct descendant of Prophet Muhammad. You know that? Mm -hmm. He knows the Quran more than anyone on earth. He will not guide us anything against Quran. And I have read Quran. There is no mention of five prayers in Quran. At that time, it was only Prophet Muhammad's guidance because of the time was such. Arabs were lazy people, lethargic people. They were drunkards and because they had lot of slavery, they did not work, the slaves were working, so they were lazy guys and that's why Rasulullah told them to stand, go in ruku, go in such door. That prayer was introduced for the sake of worldly, physical benefit. But Allah has mentioned in Quran many places about three times of prayer, in the morning, in the evening, and in the night. But there isn't any mention of five prayers in Quran. Any question? My mother about how we are Muslims first and then Ismailis. And as being Muslims, we can go to a mosque, but another Muslim, not being an Ismaili, cannot come to Jamal. Surely. Why, why you, is that? Uh, uh, what standard do you have in, uh, in your school? Well, I teach. Hmm? You teach? Yes. Yeah. How far you have gone in education? In school? No. You have any degree? Yes. I'm a teacher. In you are a teacher. You know better than anyone else. A primary class student cannot attend into the university. Sharia, Tariqat, Hakrika, Marifat. There are four levels of religious education religious understanding, religious knowledge in Islam. General Muslims, they are in first level Sharia. Now we are in Tariqat. Our level is higher than Sharia. So we can go into their mosque. They cannot come here. A first class passenger can go and sit in second class. But the second class passenger cannot go and sit in the first class. We are Tariqati people. And in Tariqa, there are many Tariqas. A Tariqa means a particular way of following faith. Islam has a lot of interpretation and difference of interpretation has caused 73 sects in Islam. As I just told that it is the Imam's prerogative to give the interpretation of Quran applicable to the present modern time. This is known as a tariqah. Because Muslims have no Imam, that's why they just stuck up the interpretation of 1400 years ago. Like see in uh, Saudi Arabia, they just uh, cut the hand of a thief. Even now in this present time, this kind of punishment was prevalent during the time of Prophet Muhammad. That was a different time. But if you apply that uh, 
order of Quran now, it is not acceptable. Four wives at that time, okay, because uh, many men were being killed in wars and battles. Women had one to two ratio and uh, they were destitutes. So Allah gave this order with a condition. But now that order is not applicable. In certain Muslim societies still they follow it. See the condition of this Mullagiri in Afghanistan. So you know, present time is so difficult that learned people in Islam they cannot uh, give any judgment and guidance to the people how to behave. But our Ismaili system is such, we have been every time throughout the history guided by Imam of the time. I give you a little, uh, this morning I spoke in my voice, a small example. During the time of Maulana Asan Ali Shah, Ali Shah, 100 and 150 years ago, we had five hours battle khayal ibadat in the morning, 12 to 5. Do you think Hazrat Imam, if say, okay, you go to Jamaat Khana for five hours every day in the morning, no one can stand that. So Imam uh, Sultan Muhammad Shah changed to three hours, then two hours. Now it is one hour, which is also very seems to be very a long thing. <laughs> so according to time, according to our tolerance, according to our ability, Imam guides us. This is his mighty faith. That is the answer. Yeah. Uh, I do have some questions. I'm not sure myself. Um, you know how we give the song? Is that our way of the God? Like, is that our own giving? Good question, Bitter. I never knew why. Uh, I give you an example and then give the answer. A man is working about four or 4.30, he leaves the office, he has a small child. In the way, the father buys a chocolate. When he comes home, the three years old boy or girl runs to the door. Hi, daddy. He hugs the child gives him the chocolate. The child opens the wrapper and then the father, the dad, he says, give me a little piece. And the child breaks a small piece, puts in the mouth of the father. Now father is asking a little piece of chocolate if he really wants to eat it, he can buy as many as chocolates. But here the theme is to instill the love between father and child. He wants to know how much he loves me and he loves him. He is not needy or greedy about a little piece of chocolate. Mala Papa Allah Himself in Quran also. Whatever we have given you, spend in the way of God. And Allah has enjoined upon moments to pay 20% out of the income. It is known as homes. One fifth. So Allah doesn't need anything. Still he is asking for money from your income. Allah is not going to run any corporation. 
but it is a kind of measurement how much you obey him how much you love him this is the basis of the sun the sun is a word from sanskrit one tenth which is equal to ushr one tenth in arabic then zakat is 2 and 1/2 percent it is given to prophet muhammad to run the faith run religion propagation some other things and this is the right that the peer receives so 10 percent for the imam 2 and 1/2 percent for the propagation of the faith to peer it comes to 12 and 1/2 percent which is equal to 1/8 but another 7 and 1/2 percent because it's 20 percent total so 12 percent you deduct from 20 percent the remaining is 7 and 1/2 percent this 7 and 1/2 percent it is up to you to spend this money amongst your needy and poor relatives your friends in the jamaat or in the society at general so every muslim is ordered to spend 20% of his income we is my lease we pay 12.5% to maula baba and then 7.5% we keep to spend for our relatives friends poor people and this charity is necessary this is the structure of islam and for that reason hazrat imam has uh, in olden days maulana sultan mohammad shah had appointed uh, welfare societies in the jamaat now it has been uh, expanded we still have welfare societies that those ismailis who are very poor they have no income so welfare societies help them let me tell you one more thing listen and listen attentively i have traveled lot very extensively i have seen 124 countries and for the past 68 years i have been traveling throughout world i have seen beggars on the street christian beggars jew beggars hindu beggars sikh beggars muslim beggars buddhist beggars brahmin beggars all sorts of all communities people there are begging society in the world on the street but i have never seen any smiley begging in the street i have never seen because it is the blessings of maula baba we haven't got any poor smiley of that extent that he has to beg there in the street we are always there to help even mola baba helps and there are so many hundreds of people on earth in our jamaat throughout that has the imam is giving them maintenance and grants no is my lease and beggar so you know when we say about a uh, talk about the sun so it is how the explanation and distribution is done yes better i couldn't you know i'm a old man i've got a little bit uh, come here Yes, day of judgment. Uh huh. Day of judgment is there, and the day of judgment is the day of death. When a man dies, 
his account is opened and uh, now we have computers so we can understand easily how god has managed what is your name sean sean bye allah says two honorable recorders are with everyone as soon as a baby is born two angels they are appointed to record every good and bad thing of that baby until he dies and we say these two people as karaman katibin in the language of quran the honorable recorders one who writes good things good deeds he sits on your right shoulder don't try to see him you will not see him. <laughs> and the one who writes the bad things our sins he sits on the left side now the poor fellow on the right side has no work all the time sitting because we don't do anything good and this fellow is so busy that he helps him to write just to give the pencil <laughs> When I was about seven years old, I heard this story, and I used to, whenever I used to rise in the morning from my sleep, I would try to see, but I never saw anyone. When I grew, it is in our mind. You know, we have memory. Whatever we do. it is recorded in our subconscious mind good and bad both when we die this account is opened computer is open and you can download all these old files it is recorded in our man's mind and this is what comes before allah says a film will be shown to you whatever you have done good and bad it's not any film of this kind that we use now it is the film here you close your eyes and you can just see your house you can see your school you can see your friends so this is human intelligence human memory human mind that is recorded and at the time of death every whole complete film of our whole movie of our whole life will come and then we will be given any kind of decision this or that okay and now another question <laughs> um, there are two or more questions one more okay what <laughs> what's a higher standard is my is my or any mistake higher standard means what in what um in religion <laughs> listen better muslims are muslims and we are muslims if a muslim is a good person remembers god does not do anything evil and if an ismaili is doing evil and doesn't follow moda so that muslim is better than ismaili it is the deed it is the action it is the behavior it is the understanding it is the way of living which is counted for and ismaili because he is an ismaili he will not be given any pass to just go through it depends on his actions on his good deeds on his ibadat and on hazrat imam's <coughs> obedience okay hmm Does it matter? Yeah, like if you're a Christian or a Jew. Uh, yes, a religion is a way of life <coughs> between you and the Creator, and also religion help helps us to live in society, and uh, we must not be hurting anyone 
or burden to anyone. It is very necessary. Religion is to make human being a good human being. I have been ordered that I have got five minutes. <laughs> and ten seconds have passed. Come up. Have you anything more? No. I use these five minutes. You are like my children. And I love you. One thing I have learned in my life because of my parents. I want to give you a page of my biography, my autobiography. I was seven years old. And right from my childhood, with my parents, I was going to Jamaat Khana. I'm coming down from a very religious family. Seven years old, in the evening after classes were over, it was a football match. So I was uh, appointed as the goalkeeper. And I was good in goalkeeping. Slowly, slowly time passed. Sun was going down and down and I was remembering Jamaat Shada. I felt that I'm late. The game was still going on. So I told my captain, I'm going for urinating. He said, okay. My shoes, my cap, my books, my jacket was there and I ran to my house, leaving all these people. My father, my mother, they had already gone to Jamaat Khana. I took a bath, changed, went to Jamaat Khana, first prayer was over. My father was Mukhi. When we came home after Jamaat Khana, father asked her, where were you? Why were you late? I said, this was the matter I explained. He told my mother, don't give him dinner tonight. Seven-year-old boy had lunch at one o'clock and now it is eight or nine o'clock in the night. I was very hungry and weak. Father went away. My mummy did not give me anything. Had she given me dinner, in spite of telling my father not to give, I would have been spoiled. But my mummy, my mother, did not give me anything to eat. I slept hungry. Early morning, five o'clock, my mother got me up. I washed, had sipped my nails after prayer and then she served me breakfast. She prepared specially hot for me and when she served me she was crying. I asked, Mommy, why are you crying? She said, I haven't eaten anything. But why did you not eat? How can a mom eat? Having a hungry child. It hurt me very much. I'm now 83 years old. But since that day, I have never missed a Jamaat Khana. Never. Yes, when I am flying or I am in train, in the safari, in traveling, 
I can't attend too much for them, but otherwise, I've never missed. I tell you people, if you keep the attendance of Jamatshwana and if in certain cases, in certain compulsions, you cannot attend Jamatshwana, say your prayer wherever you are. By walking you can say your prayer, even cycling you can say your prayer, never missed and I'm before you. Yes, please. Huh? My name? I have no name. <laughs> My name is Abu Ali. Okay, anyway guys, uh, thank you very much. I hope some of your questions were answered. Our time is up because the parents are now almost ready to pick up, pick you guys up. I uh, hope you had a little bit of informative discussion, even in the two minutes or three minutes that I sat down, I learned to say a few good things over here. Always remember, like I said, attendance in Jamaat Khana is very, very critical. Remember? Never in Jamaat Khana. You know, it is, it is when you can't come to Jamaat Khana, that's okay. Say your prayers at home. Those are the very critical lessons that we can learn in life and I think it's a very important that you understand that. The benefits of it will you will reap as you grow older. You still won't understand it right now because you are young, but you will understand it as you grow older. You will, I know that. Okay? Thank you very much in the Ali Mother everybody. Thank you all.